All right, hello, wine drinking people. It's time for more of what I've had to drink yesterday, and our good friend Anthony from the Florida Wine Company in to show us some hot new stuff from Australia. Is there such a thing? Hot new wines from Australia? Well, you know, Australia makes some of the greatest wines in the world. Unfortunately, the business has just been really tough lately. You know, other than Yellowtail Shiraz and Penfolds, very little stuff has really been moving with any volume. And uh, you know, it's a really a shame because so many expensive fifty dollar plus wines came out in such a short period of time. You just knew there was going to be some kind of backlash, and in 2008, it happened. The bottom fell out of the business, but still some great wines. To me, some of the best wines made in the world, and, well, we started out with a Pinot Noir from the Rheingau in this tasting, Stefan Brewer, and, uh, you know, I'm just in Germany. I have to say they make some great Pinot Noirs in Germany. They have too many from the Rheingau. Baden, you know, probably the best area that I've had Pinot Noir from, but this is from the Northwest Rheingau, only 150 cases produced here, American and French oak used, 10% of which is new. Good amount of all spice to the nose here, some light smoky notes, pomegranate, strawberry fruit, some light earthy quality here too. A bright and zesty wine on the palate with a nice hand of spice on the finish. Very Burgundian in nature, uh, really good Pinot Noir at $30 a bottle, not too expensive either. Okay, Ochoto Barrels. The Green Room, Grenache Noir Syrah from McLaren Vale. And uh, this is a um, low alcohol wine. I want to say at 13%. And some of the wines they showed me, like the Cabernet from the Pyrenees, is 12% alcohol. Man, you don't see that in Australia. It's, I guess there's a, you know, a change in the works here. You've seen a lot more people, instead of going for that over-extracted, over-the-top style, are now going for the savory style. And it's good to see. I think you need both. You know, It depends what mood I'm in. I mean, I, I like the big California Cabernets if I'm in a mood for that. And, you know, I like a nice Pinot Noir uh, that's lower in alcohol if I'm having a dinner and I want to have several different wines. And the effect from the alcohol is not going to be noticed as much. But this wine, really nice and even better on the second day. I couldn't believe how good all these wines were on the second day. And maybe that's just because they're lower in alcohol, more savory. I don't know. But this is something I'm doing now with all my wines to keep until the second day just to see. And usually the better wines better the second day. This wine's all made from purchased fruit from the Bluet Springs and the Oka Paringa Hills Vineyard. A husband and wife team, and uh, they use all neutral barrels. They don't want the effect of the oak also. They want you to really see the terroir and a lot of dry floral perfume spice on the nose and red uh, cherry berry fruits. Uh, really bright and zesty on the tongue with a nice hand of that dry floral note showing on the finish, kind of mouth puckering a little bit, but excellent juice at $45 if you like that savory style of uh, Rome wine. This is a, a Broken Quartz Shiraz up next on the Perrin Vineyard in the Pyrenees from Victoria. Very hard, shallow soils, soils in these estate vineyards in Victoria. Really super low yields naturally in the wines. And a bit on the underripe side, you notice a little bit of a eucalyptus, almost a green quality to the wine also, but a lot of blackberry fruit as well and some dark earth notes showing. Blackberry, black raspberry fruit on the tongue. Very bright, high tone, the nice touch of mint. And a little bit mouth puckering on the finish, but very refreshing for a Shiraz. And uh, really excellent juice at 24 bucks. And then the Broken Schwartz, uh, Broken Schwartz, and Broken Quartz Cabernet uh, from the same vineyard. And this, this family bought a plot of Old Vine Shiraz. They sell some of the fruit to Jam Sheed, a hot property there. And they've added plantings to the site as well. This wine's only 12.5% alcohol. Really Bordeaux in style, but yeah, you're not going to mistake this wine for a Bordeaux. None of the coffee and gravelly minerality you get there. Red currant and cherry fruit here. A hint of vegetal, a little bit of mint there as well, but not, not overly vegetal. Just a touch of it, you know. You get that in wines that are lower in alcohol, a little green character to it. Really savory style of Cabernet Sauvignon, that red carrot current and cherry fruit showing a, a bit of tartness here, but nice concentration and depth, a hint of that mint and herb showing through the finish. Excellent juice at 24 bucks, And then the best value of the day, man, they make some great late harvest wines in Australia. This Barossa 30-year-old Pedro Jimenez, well, it's kind of a Solera system, so the oldest grapes are 30 years old. They may have some 50, they may have some 10, etc. Anyways, this wine just singing from the glass, maple, pancake syrup-like notes, dates and figs, really complex bouquet, some brown spice and honey, showing lovely complexity here, and uh, really sweet on the tongue with a lovely silky texture, creaminess, lush, that's still bright acidity on the finish, like all great dessert wines. I mean, they kind of made you want another glass of wine, and this wine Excellent juice for 24 bucks. It is a half bottle, but still, for a 30-year tawny, that is a steal. That's what I had to drink with our friend Anthony from Florida Wine Company. I'm your host, Andrew Lampasoni, signing off for the Wine Watch, saying remember, always drink the good stuff first.